Good day. Welcome to our lesson for today, which is all about the parts of a stem. The stem of the plant serves as the main support system, and stem have two principal functions. Number one, they bear and support branches, leaves, flowers, and fruits. The stem with its leaves is called a shoot, and they serve as the great highway for the conduction of water, mineral, salts, and manufactured food. The stem is usually composed of the main stem and their branches. It is the part where the leaves are attached. Branching in plants may vary and is responsible for the plant form. There are other structures that may be associated with the stems, like what we call the lenticels, that serves as the breathing organ, and we have what we call the leaf scars and bundle scars. The scars left after a leaf fall is what we call the leaf scar. A close examination of the leaf scar will reveal the bundle scar. The bundle scars originated from the vascular bundles, xylem, and phloem tissues that were cut off after the leaf falls. Internally, the stem has three major tissues with their corresponding function. Number one is what we call the dermal tissue. It has the epidermis that covered with waxy material called chitin for protection against mechanical injury and excessive water loss. Number two is what we call the ground tissue, which is mostly composed of parenchyma cells. It has the pit and cortex. Pit is at the central core of the lightweight or inside the core, while the cortex is between the vascular tissue and epidermis are located outside the vascular tissue. In some plants, cortex cells contain chloroplasts for photosynthesis and in other cells may function to store starch. Pit and cortex cells function is for the water support system in plants. One thing to remember in cortex and pit is the parenchyma cells with large vacuoles. When these large vacuoles are filled with water, they push outward toward the cell walls, making them firm and strong. And last is the vascular tissue. In plants, the vascular tissue functions for transport and support. We have the phloem and xylem. The xylem cells transport water and mineral ions upward under the force of transpirational pull. This force helps in the upward movement of water into the xylem vessels and the phloem cells carry food from the leaves, the growing parts of the plant, or to roots for storage. That's what we call the sugar sinks. And between the xylem and phloem is called the cambium, an actively dividing cells that is responsible for the secondary growth of stems and roots. Now we have what we call the secondary growth in stem. In dicot stems, a vascular cambium is present between the xylem and phloem. By repeated cell division, this lateral meristem produces secondary phloem and xylem. The lateral meristem na ito ay present on the lateral side of the stem and the root. Ito din ang tumutulong para ma-increase yung thickness ng isang halaman. Ang good example ng lateral meristematic tissue ay yung vascular cambium and cork cambium. Kapag naalis yung tinatawag natin na epidermis, ang pumapalit naman sa kanya ay yung tinatawag na periderm, which napoproduce by cork cambium. Ang pagbabagong ito ay tinatawag natin ngayon na secondary growth. At sa mga old dicot stem, yung central pit ay napapalitan naman ng tinatawag natin na xylem. At yung buong xylem tissue sa loob ng vascular cambium ay tinatawag natin na wood. At yung lahat ng tissues outside the vascular cambium ang tinatawag natin na bark. At dahil sa secondary growth, yung diameter ng mga dicot stem ay nadadagdagan, lalo na kapag tumatanda yung isang puno o halaman. Isang dahilan kung bakit yung mga forester ay kaya mag-estimate ng tanda o age ng mga puno sa pumamagitan ng pagsukat ng diameter sa trunk o sa main stem na isang halaman. At dahil sa secondary growth, napapalitan yung mga matatanda at nadadamage na tissues. Since only dicots lamang ang merong secondary growth, pinapaliwalag nito na yung mga dicots ay 
mas mahaba ang buhay kaysa sa monocots. Bukod sa mechanical support, isa pang function ng stem ay yung conduction ng substance. Yung mga water na nagtatravel mula sa roots papunta sa stem at sa leaves ay dahil sa xylem. Paano nga ba napupunta yung tubig mula sa roots papunta sa stems? Meron tayong tinatawag na tatlong parts ng xylem. Una ay yung nasa unang figure, tinatawag natin na vessels. Pangalawang figure, yung trachids. At pangatlong figure, yung tinatawag naman natin na wood fibers. Unang part ng xylem ay yung vessel. Ito yung open-ended, thick-walled, hollow cells that are arranged one on top of the other to form a continuous column. Ito ay katulad ng isang pipeline or straw na nagdadala ng tubig sa iba't ibang parte ng halaman. At meron din tayong tinatawag na trachids kung saan katulad siya ng vessels, yun lamang mas maliit yung kanyang diameter. At meron siyang tinatawag na pits sa parehong dulo. Yung pits na yon ang area kung saan yung mga water ay mabilis na nakakapasok at nakakalabas. At yung mga vessels and trachids in the xylem are useful in the conduction of water and dissolved minerals in the plant. At yung mga wood fibers or xylem fibers naman ang nagpo-provide ng mechanical support sa xylem at gano'n na rin sa buong halaman. Yun, meron tayong tinatawag na capillary action kung saan tumataas yung tubig papunta sa stem sa pamamagitan ng xylem vessels at ng trachids. Yung distance na itinataas ng tubig ay nakadepende sa diameter ng tubes. Mas maliit yung diameter, mas mataas ang naitataas ng tubig. Yun lamang, ang capillarity ay hindi sapat para dalhin yung tubig mula sa roots papunta sa stem. Kailangan nung tinatawag natin na transpiration kung saan hinihila yung tubig pataas. Once na nawala yung tubig sa leaves, kailangan pumalit yung tubig na nasa baba papunta uli sa leaves. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung movement of food through the stem. Merong iba't ibang parts yung tinatawag natin ng phloem. Una na dyan yung sieve tube. Meron din tayong tinatawag na sieve plate, companion cell, phloem fiber, at yung phloem parenchyma. At ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung unang part, which is the sieve tube. Yung sieve tube ay isang unusual plant cell at meron siyang cytoplasm. Yun lamang wala siyang tinatawag na nucleus. At ang bawat sieve tube ay meron na created companion cells na nagpo-provide ng needed nuclear control. At ang bawat sieve tubes ay merong sieve plates sa bawat dulo. At yung thin protoplasmic strand ay lumalabas sa sieve plates na nakakonect naman sa sieve tubes. At dahil wala nga yung dense nucleus sa ating sieve tube, yung water-filled cytoplasm ang siyang nagdidissolve ng sugar doon sa ating plant. At yung the protoplasmic strands na nakakonect sa sieve tubes ang nagpe-permit ng movement ng sugar pababa sa stem sa pamamagitan ng diffusion. Again, yung diffusion is the movement of substance from a region of greater concentration to a region of lower concentration. Next, meron tayong tinatawag na companion cell. Ito ay merong nucleus at dense cytoplasm. And meron din siyang maraming ribosomes at maraming mitochondria. nag undertake ng metabolic reaction and other cellular function ng ating companion cells unlike do sa sieve element or the sieve tube dahil wala nga itong appropriate organelles. Ang isang function ng ating companion cell is to fuel the transport of materials around the plant. At pangatlo, yung tinatawag natin na flow and fiber. Ito yung nag act as a protective measure do sa mga herbivore sa pamamagitan ng pagbuo ng gritty texture sa isang halaman. Yung mga flow and fiber, meron yung tinatawag natin na sclerenchyma kung saan ito yung mga main support tissue ng flow and at ito din yung nagpo-provide ng stiffness and strength sa isang halaman. At panghuli, yung tinatawag natin na flow and parenchyma. Ito yung mga collection of cells at tinatawag natin na filler sa isang plant tissues. Ang main function ng ating flow and parenchyma ay yung mag-store ng starch, fats, and proteins. Ganun na din yung mga tinatawag natin na tannins and resins sa mga certain plants. Maobserbahan o mapapansin din natin sa mga puno kapag pinutol sila yung mga dark and light colored dun sa kanilang mga wood. Yun yung tinatawag natin na anatomy ng isang wood. Meron tayong tinatawag na hardwood, sapwood, at yung bark. Pag tinatawag natin na hardwood, Kapag tumatanda kasi yung puno, yung inner xylem ay namamatay. Usually, 
this wood darkens visibly as well, becoming the hard wood. While the soft wood is the newer, outermost layers of the xylem, remains active in transport of water and nutrients. And yung bark na tinatawag natin is yung thickened cork, the cork cambium and phloem form the familiar tough external bark. Sometimes contain useful chemicals such as aspirin and spice cinnamon. At mapapansin din natin doon sa mga wood yung tinatawag natin na annual ring. Ito yung mga growth layers of wood na napoproduce kada taon sa isang stem o sa roots ng isang puno o shrubs. To end our discussion for today, a very important use of stem to man are the following. It can be a source of construction materials. It can be for furniture and containers, for paper, rayon, and cellophane. It can be a source of fibers for clothing and also for medicines. And also, stems are source of food. I hope you learned something today about the parts of a stem. Thank you for watching.